Hi everyone! Today we will talk about the decimal and binary number systems and I will of course show you how to convert numbers from one to the other. So first, let's talk about the decimal system. In the decimal system, we use digits from 0 to 9 to create numbers. And since we are using 10 digits, we also call this system base 10. So when we take the number 1024, for example, we can see that it's made out of four ones, two tens, zero hundreds, and one thousand. And when we look a bit deeper, we notice that all the multiplicands are actually powers of 10, because one is also 10 in a power of zero. 10 is also 10 in a power of one. Then 100 equals to 10 in a power of two, and lastly, 1,000 is 10 in a power of 3. Now, I am sure that most of us are very familiar with the decimal system from childhood. But how about the binary one? The binary system is only using two digits to create numbers, 0 and 1. And since we only have two digits in our toolbox, we call this system base 2. Now, in base 10, we have multiplied the digits by powers of 10. That's why in base 2, we will multiply by powers of 2. For example, if we take the binary number 1110, we can multiply the rightmost digit by 2 in the power of 0. Then, we will multiply the next digit by 2 in the power of 1 the next one by 2 in the power of 2, and so on until we reach the last digit. And when we add these numbers, we get 1 times 8 plus 1 times 4 plus 1 times 2 plus 0 times 1, which is altogether 14. So we can say that the binary number 1110 is actually the decimal number 14. So without even noticing, we have just learned how to convert binary numbers to decimals. But how does it work the other way around? Let's take the decimal number 88 as an example. Here, since we have reversed the bases, we will also need to reverse the operation. So instead of multiplying by 2, we will gradually divide by 2, and we will keep track of the remainder. Now, 88 divided by 2 is 44. We have no remainder because 88 is perfectly divisible by 2. So we write 0 along the side. 44 is also perfectly divisible by 2, as well as 22. So we will remember 0 twice. On the other hand, 11 divided by 2 is 5.5 which means we do have a remainder. So in this case, we will write 5 as the result, and we will remember a remainder of 1 along the side. Similarly, 5 divided by 2 is 2 with a remainder of 1, because 5 equals 2 times 2 plus 1. Then, 2 divided by 2 is 1 with no remainder, and then 1 divided by 2 is 0, with the remainder of 1. So when the result is 0, we are done converting. We can take the remainder from the bottom up, and this would be our binary number. So we can say that 88 in decimal is actually 1011000 in binary. But what happens when we deal with floating point numbers? So let's say our decimal number is 5.4375. Now here, we would have to make a distinction between the whole number and the fraction. And we already know how to convert the whole number. So 5 divided by 2 equals 2 with a remainder of 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1 with a remainder of 0. And lastly, 1 divided by 2 is 0 with a remainder of 1. So 5 in decimal equals 101 in binary. And since fractions are on the opposite side of the decimal point, 
instead of dividing by 2, we will multiply by 2. And we will also note if the result is bigger than 1, smaller than 1, or equal to 1. Now, 0.4375 times 2 equals 0.875. And since the result is smaller than 1, we will write 0 along the side and move on. On the other hand, 0.875 times 2 equals 1.75, which is now bigger than 1, and that's why we will have an additional step. So we will first write 1 along the side, and then we will subtract 1 from the result. And then instead of working with 1.75, we will move on with 0 0.75. And similarly, 0.75 times 2 equals 1.5, which is also bigger than 1. That's why we will write 1 along the side and we will subtract 1 from 1.5. And then when we multiply 0.5 by 2, we get a perfect 1. So now the result is not smaller nor bigger, it is 100% of a match. That means we have reached the end of our calculation. So we will write 1 along the side and we are done. But with fractions, we read the remainder from the top to the bottom. So our binary fraction then is 0, 1, 1, 1. And whenever we combine it with the whole number, we see that the decimal 5.4375 is the equivalent of the binary 101.0111. And lastly, when we take a binary floating point number, for example, 1100, Point zero zero 0001, it is actually even easier to convert. Recall that we must multiply all our digits by their corresponding power of 2. And while the digits of our whole numbers are multiplied by 2 in a power of 0 and upwards, the digits of our fraction are multiplied by 2 in a power of minus 1 and downwards. That way, our powers are in a perfect sequence. And when we add the numbers, we get 1 times 8 plus 1 times 4 plus 0 times 2 plus 0 times 1. Then we have the decimal point followed by 0 times half plus 0 times quarter plus 1 times 1 eighth. And then when we add the results, we get 12 and an 8. See? I told you it's gonna be easy. And that's it. Now, in the next tutorial, I will show you how to translate these algorithms, these sets of instructions, into code. And this will help us complete the KeyVMD mobile app project we have recently started. Now, if you guys found this tutorial helpful, please leave it a like, maybe leave it a comment, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell, or even share it with your friends and family, who still don't know how to convert binary to decimal and vice versa. I'm sure they exist. Now, thanks again for watching and I will see you very soon.